um, let me go ahead and uh, start the recording. Did you start the recording, Gloria? Excellent, great, thank you. Um, as most of you know, I am Dr. Paul Miller and I'm the Professional Development Director of Elite. And I wanted to thank you for joining us today as we not only highlight, but celebrate the wonderful things happening across the college as we continue to restore, evolve and transform Montgomery College into a post-pandemic institution. This showcase truly um, emphasizes that theme of elevate, uh, excuse me, elevate and celebrate MC. You know, we've all been through a lot over this past uh, year or two years and truly taken time to celebrate what we do and come together as a community really uh, allows us to um, learn and, and grow from each other and, and be as one as a community as we continue to, uh, to uh, face the uh, pandemic head on. So as we kick off this sh uh, showcase, I wanted to take some time to express my gratitude to Gloria Barron and Phil Bona. Um, they've done a yeoman's job put in the uh, 2021 virtual faculty showcase together. And I also wanted to send a special thank you to the faculty who will be presenting over the next few days for your willingness and your efforts to ensure that we can find ways to continue to celebrate during these challenging times. Everyone at MC has suffered as a result of COVID-19, but coming together to celebrate again really is what we need to do for our community. It's my honor to kick off Elevate and Celebrate MC by introducing you to a group of award-winning MC faculty members who will be discussing how their efforts over the past year um, has allowed for student success to continue despite all of the challenges that we face. So I would like to uh, give a special thank you to J Jin Choi, William Dunn, Leila Hashimi, and Shalon Childs. Hopefully by the end of this session, um, you will walk away and be able to apply sound principles of teaching and learning, advocacy and reflection within your professional context. Um, you'll be able to adopt insights from the panel to improve your teaching practices and assess how um, their practices have evolved and restored and transformed over the course of the past year. So we do have dedicated time at the end of the panel discussion for your questions. However, we do invite you to submit questions along the way in the chat box, and we will be monitoring those and uh, using those questions accordingly um, when uh, we have specific time to address those questions. So I also wanted to give a big thank you and shout out to Brandon Wallace. Um, Brandon is with us this morning, and he will be the MC for today. Um, so, Brandon, I'm going to pass it over to you to get us started. Thank you so much, Dr. Miller. I appreciate that. Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. I don't take my MC duties lightly. I don't have any turntables, but <laughs> but I'm excited about today. I know we only have an hour, so I'm going to just get uh, right into it. I would love to start. Oh, well, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Professor Brandon Wallace. I'm an associate professor in the School of Education right here at Montgomery College. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you all today for so many reasons, because I truly believe, especially with the three tenets of restore, evolve, and transform, we're going to get a lot of great ideas generated in hopes to provide another sense of um, opportunity for so many of us and what Dr. Miller so poignantly described as just tough times. So anytime we can have a little bit of help, uh, I believe in that. And so I'm excited to be here with you all today. We're gonna kick it off with some uh, brief introductions. I'm gonna give the panelists about two minutes just to share a little bit about their projects, areas of expertise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I'm gonna ask Jim Choi for about two minutes, share with us who you are, some of your interests, your background, et cetera. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jin Choi, and currently I teach Korean here at MC. Um, but two minutes probably will not be enough for me to go ahead and introduce my background. But Never I'm enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, um, I come from a background of a, a degree in double E. I did research um, designing and um, designing communication devices for the Navy for about seven, eight years. Um, and then I was a director at the YMCA for about seven or eight years again. Then I went to Korea to teach English. So I actually taught English as a foreign language in Korea for the students in public schools. But then at the same time, I was the English teacher trainer um, at public schools. While I was there, um, I went back to school, got my master's, worked on my PhD, 
in getting a degree in teaching Korean as a foreign language, and that's where I am. Um, my concentration is on um, teaching culture in a language classroom. And right now I'm just enjoying what I do. And it's been seven years and I don't plan on changing my career at this time. I Thank love it. you. You're, you're stuck with us. So that's a good <laughs> uh, And if you don't mind, I'd love to keep it informal. So is Jen okay that I just refer to you as Jen or would you prefer Dr. Choi? Oh, Jen's fine. All right, perfect, perfect. Well, public school teacher, you're a woman after my own heart. Uh, and thank you for your service to the Navy. That's absolutely important and imperative. So thank you so much. William, I'm going to call on you, William Dunn. Uh, give us about two minutes of your background, who you are, your area of expertise, and some projects. Yes, yes. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dr. William Dunn. Um, I have a very interesting, I guess, storyline. I kind of, you know, I grew up a, a, a you know, a, a troubled youth, a product of a high school parent. Uh, neither my brother or my sister graduated from high school. It was sports that basically saved my life. Yeah. You know, I went to college on a basketball scholarship. Um, you know, and from there, you know, education just became a part of, of just, just, just my core. I didn't even realize the value of it at the time, but, you know, I graduated from, from college. And then from there, you know, I went on to get my master's degree. And, 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 and throughout my, my life, I've wanted to be able to be a vision of hope for, for young people or just really people in general to see that, you know, just to know that you could be able to make a change. You don't have to, to be like the negative environment that you are surrounded by. So that, you know, moving forward, I was able to, you know, to move forward to, you know, became an author um, of three books. I'm a speaker. So I travel um, telling my story about it's not about how you start. And so that's a core of how I use what I do even in the teaching dynamics that, you know, it's not about how you start. So, you know, even in the classroom. And so, you know, being a you know professor with the GED program has been great. Um, I tell the students all the time, it's not, I'm just not here to teach you. It's personal, right? So I want, I believe that just because, you, you know, you don't have your GED doesn't mean that you're not smart. And so, you know, creating that theme that is not about how you start you know, that's, we all live like that. We all can dig back into our storylines and look at where we started to, to where we are. And so from there, you know, went on to, you know, get my doctor's degree, you know, and so, you know, being able to, to also show in, in, in my walk of life as well, too, that it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. And so I, I, I'm, I'm excited about being here, um, you know, also, too, being a, a visual and a voice. I know oftentimes you don't see a lot of Black males that's in this arena. And so being able to just, you know, show my story, tell my story and be a part of somebody else's story is, 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 is great. So thank well, I you. No, I appreciate you sharing that. It's something strong about our narrative. And I love that somebody should have hashtag. I don't know if we have a, a, an official hashtag or something, but <laughs> it's not how you start, it's how you finish it. So I'm already, we're, we, don't, we ain't but halfway through the introductions and I'm already here for it all. <laughs> uh, Layla, Layla Hashimi. I'm going to call on you next. A little bit about your background, area, area of expertise, and some things you want to share with us. Sure, absolutely. So I'm Leila Hashimi. I've been teaching political science and history, or at the political science and history department since 2011 at MC, so a very long time. Um, my background is in poli sci, and I'm currently a postdoctoral research fellow at the Terrorism, Transnational Crime, and Corruption Center. That's at George Mason University. So there, I get to work on a lot of different projects. Um, the, in my professional career. So I've worked on antiquity smuggling. Right now I'm look, working on a National Science Foundation grant that looks at counterfeit personal protective equipment and um, pharmaceuticals during the pandemic. So that's been a bit scary, but really interesting project. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be with you all here today. Uh, I have lots of other interests. I belly dance with swords on the side. Um, and I've definitely collaborate a lot at MC. So I really love my time at MC being able to collaborate across disciplines. I find everyone to be um, really welcoming. I helped develop a course on global human rights for the poli sci department, which I'll tell you more about. So thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's our pleasure to have you. And you will find an offline email about the belly dancing sword thing for me <laughs> later on today. You're absolutely going to find one. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, last but absolutely certainly not least, Shalon Child, share a little bit about yourself. Hi, so again, I'm Shalon Childs and I work as a disability support services counselor in um, here at MC Rockville campus. Um, I recently am, took over as acting chair uh, for DSS yesterday. Um, I've been here <laughs> since, <laughs> I've been here since 2011. I, um, 
I work mainly with, um, you know, we make work with students who have disabilities, but I also work with the deaf and hard of hearing population. And so I have my master's in mental health counseling um, that I received from Gallaudet. So it has also a focus on um, deaf and hearing, or deaf and hard of hearing population. Um, you know, we work with students who have all kinds of disabilities, uh, visible, hidden, um, just making sure that they have access to, um, you know, academia here. And so I had started out with a bachelor's in psychology. I'm from the West Coast, um, Seattle area. I moved there and was there for about eight years. They had a ton of deaf people. And because I thought the language so beautiful, I decided to get my AA in interpreting, um, moved out here and worked as an interpreter full time, but also had always wanted to do some type of counseling, um, some type of more, more, I guess, helpful type of, of situation where I'm working with people, talking with, uh, with them about issues, that type of thing. And so I decided to go get my master's and here I am uh, working with students um, in different ways, trying to make sure that they are um, getting the same access to you know, classrooms and, and trying to make sure that they understand that even though they have a disability, they can still make it through college life. So that's me. Um, things that I'm interested in, I still play softball. Uh, so I play softball typically from April to um, September, sometimes October, depending on the weather. Um, I, um, yeah, I, I love doing interpreting. I still do that on the side. I do concerts and, and theater work. So it, those are two of my main passions. And then I have seven-year-old twins who keep me going. <laughs> That's me. To say the least, keep you going. I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that. Uh, we're going to kick us off with the first question. Uh, so one of the tenets, especially one of the things that Dr. Miller just re uh, re referred to is restoring. Um, I know we've lost a lot and I love this idea of restoration, uh, getting back and sometimes getting back better. And so I'm going to ask a couple of questions this morning to a few of you all and I'll be calling you out by names. And so uh, we'll have a good time, answer the questions and all that other good stuff. But I'm so excited about I'm literally uh, I have a piece of paper here. I'm going to be taking my own notes because <laughs> in as much as. Uh, I do, I'm, you know, I do work hard at Montgomery College. There's always something to learn. There's always something to learn. And so I'm excited about what I'm going to get out of today's session. Uh, so the first question, what are you doing to restore counseling service to the pre-pandemic level as we move forward? And I think that this is a perfect question for Shalon. Um, what do you uh, have in terms of a commentary on that question? What are you doing to restore counseling services to the pre-pandemic level as we move forward? So to be honest, um, I feel like our pro providing counseling for students um, did not change a lot, even in, you know, once the pandemic hit. We worked tirelessly to make sure that students could access this, you know, via um, Zoom, you know, we, we all ended up getting cell phones from work so that we could text students about appointments, emails. And so we were still working with our students um, in the same manner that we would if we were on campus. So we were very accessible. We, um, you know, still had appointments um, with students on a regular basis. We met with professors, all of this during, during this time we did on Zoom. I feel like for, in some ways it was, it was easier for students to meet with us online because we still had students that were working and I would have students call me in between their lunch hours. And yeah. so they didn't have to come to campus. And so what we did learn was being able to contact us virtually by phone was definitely an, an improvement for the students because it just made us more accessible. Um, and so that was, that was a huge thing for us. Um, again, I don't feel like we, slowed down at all during the pandemic. Um, it was just different. You know, we weren't able to walk over to another department and say, hey, this student here, um, you know, needs this or to, to meet with professors in their office, which we do all the time. We just had to figure out a different way to do it, which was through the Zoom, which worked really well. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I feel like we are we are continuing that. And even now that we are back on campus, you know, we are still meeting with students all the time, um, you know, whenever some students might ask for an 8.30 appointment, some, some of us might not start till nine, but we, you know, we're just making ourselves available to students so that they can get what they need 
to continue their their education because like you said it was a huge loss for some people um having to work at home um having to be at school at home some of the home some some students home lives aren't you know what they want to show to everybody so being on zoom is hard but you know being flexible to allow students to have their their screens off so that we can still have a conversation and still get um you know what they need um and hear about that i love that and i just wrote down text messaging i was shocked well i'm not shocked but well i kind of am so i'll tell a quick story i was shocked that my students were so benevolent to allow me to join their text message you know, they, you know, the students, they kind of corral and they have their text messaging streaming boards or whatever. I don't know what they're called, but uh, they're all on text messaging, trying to sense make the assignments and sense make. And so I said, instead of y'all trying to muddle around through it, put me on to the to the you know text message. And so that has even encouraged me to engage with them differently. I'm going to segue to uh, Layla. Layla, how do you think you're going to engage with your students differently? Yeah, I think it's exactly what you and Shalon were, were talking about. We have this. So I've been teaching online for maybe 10 years now or seven years some, for a long amount of time. So I feel like my transition into teaching online was not as difficult for some. Um, so I was using the remind. I was using the text messaging, all that before. But what I found really interesting is that I had students come to me that had never met with a professor before. Like they've been in MC two, three, four years. They were about to be out of MC and they would just thank me and be so grateful to have the opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with the professor. I'm like, we're here for you. We are here for you. We're here at eight in the morning. We're here via telephone. We're here via text. Like you just need to reach out. And she was just so overwhelmed with gratitude to just say like, and we didn't, you know, it wasn't like a specific assignment or anything. It was just talking about like, what's your next step? Like, what are your next moves? So I think, that idea of like having open office hours just making yourself available um even though it can be a little bit vulnerable because you're like maybe they will ask for the 8 a.m but if you have colleagues that support you in that i think is really important because it shows the students that you know it's not just about that hour and a half uh, a week or three hours a week that's right and i love how you brought up this idea of academic and non-academic because we all have in as much as yes this is our job to you know meet the academic needs of our students, there's a whole non I mean, students are more than students, right? They're mothers, they're fathers, they're little brothers, they're big cousins, they're uh, employees. There's so many more things that kind of situate them in their ecological systems. And so I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, I'm gonna transition to Jen real quick. Uh, Jen, how have you evolved as an educator during the global pandemic? All right, so in talking about the evolving, um, can I share my screen? Because I just prepared something very short that I-, I Paul nodding his head. So that means Gloria got my back. Somebody's going to be able to share screens. Yes. <laughs> we'll take care of that. Yes. Awesome. Give me a second. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about what you're going to bring up. Because I know <laughs> that, uh, especially as we move forward to this idea of evolving, we all have to do it. It's either evolution or extinction. That's what I tell my students. Either you're going to evolve, right? And then you have two choices in this life. Wait a minute. I'm not able to, are you able to do it, Paul? I'm not able to do it from here. Yeah, so you should be able to. So, Gloria, if you stop sharing your screen, um, then. Oh, that's the should, deal. That's yeah. why. Okay, yes. There you go. Done. Thank you. All right. Um, let me see. Let me go ahead and share now. I feel like we're all like versioning LinkedIn things. <laughs> like we're technology experts, all of us. So go ahead and share. All right. Um, so can you see my screen? Yep. Thumbs up. All right. Good. Um, so here's a question that you had asked. Like, how have you evolved as an educator during the pandemic? Right. And the second question that actually followed that was, how is your approach to teaching different from 18 months ago? So I just put together something that compares what it was like before and after or during. So before the pandemic, it was, I, all until now, before the pandemic, it was all face-to-face -face classes. So, so generally the teaching was restricted to inside a classroom. Um, and also students were actually more dependent on the instructor for their lessons. And most of the work was done on paper. And now during the pandemic, we switched over to online um, SRT teaching. So during the pandemic, these were something that has happened. So students um, own their own learning. 
And what that means is that much of the information was provided on the Blackboard for the students to take charge of their own learning. So as an example, um, this is something that I had put that I'm using right now. So on the Blackboard for each of the lessons, I have a folder that I have put up when we're gonna be doing it. And I have for each of the lessons, I have a folder. And within that folder, I provide for them the PowerPoint, videos that explain things for the grammar, for expressions, um, vocabulary, because I teach a language, and also a worksheet that goes along with um, the vocabulary work. So it's all there for the whole semester so that they can actually work at their own pace if they wanted to. And um, in, during this pandemic, I had more opportunities to connect with the students. So we didn't actually have to be there physically at the same time. And another thing that happened was that students were given more opportunities to correct their own work through online quizzes. So it's not something that we do in class and it's done it over. They are able to actually take multiple tries to um, enhance their learning and see what they are missing. Nice. Also, um, right before, well, I guess during, I got my um, certificate for um, online teaching certificate. So for this semester, I am teaching a blended course. Congratulations. And that has worked out great for this type of um, environment. And so what has happened with this during the pandemic is that students were dependent on the instructors before, but now they actually own their own learning and they're also held accountable mm -hmm. for their own learning. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no you're fine. Go ahead. Um, other type of things that happened were the type of assignments that I had used. So on top of the Blackboard features, we had apps um, that we had used for students' um, recordings. Awesome. Um, video recordings that they can upload and they can provide feedback. We also did Padlet, and this is can be done synchronously or asynchronously, where people can just go and share their own writings and we can critique and we can comment on them. And also for the vocabulary work, I made up, up worksheets instead of giving them vocabulary quizzes, which, um, and we also had an opportunity for us to implement global learning. So we partnered up with another class in different part of the world because we are now online and this was made possible. So with that, the evolution is not restricted to a physical location, but the connection is the key. And also students um, own their own learning and they're held accountable. And work is completed in diverse creative ways that students can enjoy and where we can all be happy. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love that. I love that. William, I'm going to draw you in real quick, if you don't mind. I want you to kind of address that question. How has your approach, especially dealing with the vulnerable population that you get, you're privileged to join in uh, that work with, um, how has your approach to teaching been different um, now juxtaposed 18 or so many months ago? Um, so, so you know, the GED program, first of all, I want to give a, a huge a shout out to, to Robbie and Fat Wee and Emma and that and, and the, with the GED program. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Mm -hmm. um, what's what's interesting about that is it's, it's more of a more of a re-education, um, you know, evolving to, to to online learning has been different. Um, some of us who know about online learning, well, you never had an opportunity to see the professor. You just answer two questions and people just connect with each other. So in the GED program, because of a lot of the students, uh, this is their kind of first time in, in school in, in, in a while. So we're talking about now taking individuals who 20 years ago or more was in a classroom and now just teaching them about some of the, this, this basic principles of just using the online platform, how to be able to log in, how, how not to be afraid of. The, the first day of class, I ask everybody, how many of you all are afraid of this computer? I mean, you know, that whether it be older or younger students, they're like, you know, that's, you know, it's a fear factor that comes with that. And not Absolutely. just for students, but it's some professors. It's also like, wait a minute, I'm not used to teaching online 25 years, 30 years. I mean, you know, the pandemic created a, a new space for everybody. No one was an expert before 2020. 
on how to teach online. They can may have taught a different, but no one was an expert. I don't care who they are. Yeah. So yeah. part of it is we're learning together. So teaching students that you can't, don't be afraid of the online learning. How is it valuable? How can you use that? And so every day, I mean, I have a unique class. Well, every day we start off with a question for the day, just so they can be able to build their academic confidence and, and, and coming from that pathway. You know, oftentimes I tell the students and, you know, my story, look, you know, my sister and my brother graduated. And just because you didn't graduate, it doesn't mean you're not smart. So let's first start with hoping to build your academic confidence and then we can give you content. So whether it be something as simple as, all right, let's everyone show me, I'm going to show you how to share your screen, right? But, you know, we, we oftentimes try to take students. I should say that I was a juvenile appeal for years and said, we oftentimes try to take kids where we want them to go, but we don't even know where they're at. Yeah. Well, what's so unique about the GED program? This is a start. So, you know, we can't, all the content and curriculum is, 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 is relative only if they don't even, they're not even confident on how to even know how to share their screen or how to even be able to click on a link if, use that link. So, you know, evolving to being able to know how to have confidence and to use the online platform through some simplex activities. You know, we'll start off with a, a question for the day. We you know we'll do a Kahoot that's educational, not a Kahoot that's fun, and we'll do both. So therefore, you're just getting comfortable with just being and answering questions on, an, on a Kahoot platform. So just involvement to learning the online platform, building the academic confidence, has allowed students to be more comfortable in receiving the information. So that's that's part of, 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 of how I've moved and changed in terms of the teaching. I love that. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's ever seen the movie Lean On Me, but uh, Principal is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's why I became a Baltimore City Public School teacher <laughs> for so many reasons. But Joe Clark uh, used to say, education is not the enemy of enthusiasm. Right. You can have both at the same time. You can have a good time and get educated. And I'll also say, it's interesting that you, uh, I, take, I took it for granted. And sometimes, I tell this to my siblings all the time, sometimes it's not enough to find out where all the students are going wrong, where the administrator are there, everybody's going wrong. Sometimes you have to find out where you go wrong. And I remember one time I was teaching in Germantown, an English course, and to make a long story short, I had a lot of dual, um, you know, high school students who were doing the dual enrollment. They're doing dual enrollment. And I was, you know, shouting, you know, make sure you get on Blackboard and upload it, this, upload this on Blackboard and post, make sure your posts are do this and snap. The next day, everybody was quiet. They, they left, they came in, nobody posted anything. <laughs> nobody had uploaded anything. I'm ready to bomb out the class. And they were like, we don't know what Blackboard is. <laughs> we don't know where a post is. We don't know, like, so literally it is, teaching not necessarily the content of the course but the logistics of it all this is how you log on to blackboard this is what i meant by discussion board posts this is i don't want an attachment i want you to write directly into so i totally appreciate that um the next question is going to dovetail on this idea of transform and i'd love for everybody to answer this one i think we have enough time uh this idea of transformation uh, so this is the question. In your opinion, how does Montgomery College and especially um, just your department um, need to transform in order to continue meeting the needs of your students post pandemic? So what do you think, in your opinions, we'll start with Layla, if we, we all don't mind. We'll start with Layla. What do you um, kind of envision in terms of a transformation, especially in the locus of your control or in your department? What do we need to do? in order to really transform the way we engage, connect, support our students? Absolutely, thank you for the question. So I think a lot of it is similar to what everyone has been saying now, like it's a different, looking at different types of learning, trying to engage with students in different ways, getting them to, what I love, and this is my like short little anecdote, sorry, is that I have students make their own projects. So it's political science class, everything can be political. Yeah. And so I say, what's your passion? Are you interested in like, Muslim women's fashion? Are you interested in women in sports? I do a lot of gender stuff in my classes. Um, and then they make these videos and they've gotten progressively more interesting. Some of these people, I swear, are like movie makers in the in the making, right? Like they're just really great and they'll go all out for their videos. Some of them are a little bit more like a selfie video, but just to see them teaching one another and being able to interact with one another in a different way, just like Jin was saying with the different assignments, I think is a really important aspect. Um, I will drop a link to a really interesting platform that I'll mention in a second. Personally, for the poli sci and history department, we are very 
dual department, as you can imagine. We have our historians, we have our political science folk. Um, I think that we did a great job creating this global, global human rights course, which really brings in a service learning element. So this has been hard to implement during the pandemic, to be honest. But the idea is that we find NGOs, civil society groups, organizations in the community, and students can actually volunteer with them and spend some time at those organizations for a semester. So despite it being really challenging and finding places that will place a student for one semester, like USIP is a great example. We get to take them out into the DC area, um, which I think has really helped. And like, I think generally what's um, been really helpful is the political science department does things like the Jefferson Cafe, and um, a lot of student outreach, the whole idea of not looking at the student just as an academic entity, right? Like looking at them as like a whole, in um, public policy, we often talk about like a whole of society approach. I think we need a whole of student approach, right? Yeah. We're looking at the student's home life, we're looking at their schooling, we're looking at their family life and making sure like some of our students, and I have, um, you know, colleagues in our department where they're not eating at night, right? Yeah. They maybe don't have a place to sleep. And so there are a lot of I don't want to say bigger issues, but like you're saying, like it's um, it's not just about learning. It's about supporting our students to succeed. Right. And that can be anything from do you have a meal or giving out food at the you know food food truck or helping them create a community garden at the Rockville campus? These kinds of things that really help them sustain themselves, but also not. I don't want to say weighing them down with academics, but like Jen was saying, like offering extra credit, showing them that we're here and we're showing up to help them succeed rather than giving them this like impossible test that they fail and they have no, you know, way to kind of redeem themselves. So like, I definitely, I've implemented that, I think before, but even more so now during the pandemic, where it's like, your grade is always a discussion. We're always here to talk. We have counseling services. Like we have a whole community as faculty and staff as well to be able to do that. Um, and then just one more thing. Um, I think it's really cool to use videos you know new platforms remind i'm sure a lot of you know but one that i really like is called wonder.me and i'm going to put the link in the chat um this is a way i don't think anyone's done it yet um just like william was saying like no one knows how to interact perfectly online <laughs> no one knows how to teach perfectly online but wonder.me's purpose is to try to recreate a physical atmosphere on the internet so you can put a background or you can put a bunch of tables at a banquet and then people kind of like come up so i'll come up to brandon and i move my little emoticon or avatar I love and if, it. if we get close enough we'll sync together and then we're in a little group and so it's this idea of like you know when you're talking in person and like that natural progression happens where like five people are talking it splits off in two and three like you can kind of try to do that virtually um you can lock people out it's really fun like just try it with your students and your colleagues i think it's a it's a fun little tool to use you have my word. I wrote it down. It's in the chat box, wonder.me. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Shalom, I'm going to ask you now, what do we need to do to transform and really trans? You know, we always talk about, you know, transform this, transform, but meaningfully, significantly transform. What do we have to do? I think we have to continue to meet students where they are. Um, and as long as we're trying to push what we feel like, oh, this is going to be the best thing, until we know what the student actually needs, what we're putting on them might actually be derailing them. Mm. You know, um, I think about with DSS before pandemic was we have to do in-person meetings. Um, so, you know, again, that impacts students who might be working, that impacts parents who, you know, might not be able to get care for their kids. And now that we've done this for two years almost, we know that, hey, we can still provide services on the phone, um, you know, through Zoom or whatever, you know, whatever platform. I use FaceTime with some of my students, like, whatever works for them. I'm like, I'm, I'm in. And so I think we just, we just have to know, we need to ask, what is working for you? And again, we, we might not be able to provide everything. But if there are things that we can change on our end that is going to work better for our students, I think that's where we need to continue to, to look at things. Um, you know, even now we are trying to come back to campus, but what we've learned is that there are plenty of students who love remote. There are plenty of students who still want distance learning and there's plenty of students who wanna be on campus. And I think we need to continue to provide all of those ways for students to access the college, um, and it doesn't have to be just school classes, you know, it can be everything, being able to access the Shaw Center, being able to access DSS, financial aid, all of those things in a way that works with their schedule, because as we all have said, it's not just education that people are working on, they are, you know, they have their life, and so we, 
you know, trying to work in a way that we can continue to provide what they need um, in a way that they need it. And Shalon, you made such a great point. Uh, you know, I've been doing a little bit of work, a little bit of work on this idea between uh, the golden rule versus the platinum rule. And, you know, the golden rule is treat folks the way you would want to be treated, do unto others as they would have you do, you know. Uh, but the platinum rule is treat folks the way they would want to be treated. And it starts with a conversation. How do you want me to help you? How do you want me? And sometimes students don't know what they don't know. And so like, there's three options here. Do you want to do it this way? <laughs> do you want to? Uh, and so I love that idea. I love that idea. I'm going to go with William next. William, how do we transform ourselves to never go back to the, I mean, we can't go back, right? There is no going back. <laughs> we have to move forward. How do we uh, continue this transformation process as we continue to engage and support students? Again, I, I, you know, a GED program is, 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 is such a unique program. You know, most of the students who enroll in that, that GED program have been either one, they don't have kind of an academic confidence. They, they, they're, they're, they're feeling like they're in, it's, it's, it's like education is more of a challenge. I try to make it fun. I tell them, I tell every class, I, I start off and let them know, listen, first of all, if you signed up for a class where it's going to be boring and not engaging, you should just go ahead and log off and tell them, <laughs> you to get to know, professor, right? So, if, but if you're in a class, if you if you're signed up, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be able to move forward, not where you think you can't go, but where we know you can go, then this is the right class for you. So every class is you know it's, it's I want them to be excited about the learning and not intimidated by the learning. Remember, more than ninety percent of the students in the GED program, if not almost a hundred percent of them, I mean obviously they didn't graduate from high school, but in terms of their storylines. Each one has a different process or storyline and, and, and education was intimidating or it wasn't priority mm -hmm. to them. So in, in, in comparing where they are now, remember, the storyline is all the theme is always it's not about how you start. Right. It's, 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 it's how you finish and not only allowing them to share their stories, but I spent a few minutes in every class getting to know who they are, whether that be. Tell me some of the things that you feel that'll be a challenge for you in moving forward. Well, if, if a student says, well, I got two young kids, I drop them off in school when I'm teaching the morning class. Well, I know now why that student's going to be a few minutes late when they log yeah. in, right? Finding out that they're human beings. I think so oftentimes as educators, and again, I taught in high school as well, that we, we sometimes, again, we move that curriculum decimal so quick and trying to be able to get through that, but the students are not learning. I tell them it's more value in you learning now and learning how to be able to learn now, which is going to allow you to be able to pick up the information later versus me being able to rush you through the information and you don't ever pick it up at all. And that's what a lot of the GED, because, you know, once they feel like they they can't get something in the GED program, they shut down. So th that means they go back to that lack of academic confidence. So building confidence, um, I think that as educators, we all know that the online platform is something that was new for all of us, but it really hasn't been new for a lot of the students. Like mm -hmm. using online social media, I, I, I use a lot of comparison to life skills in school. Like yes, you know, yesterday's class, I talked about, you know, where I was introducing a new subject area and I said, you know, the students were frustrated. And I said, this is not to get anybody frustrated. I said, let's remember, you don't learn to drive by just reading the driver's aid book, right? you have to get behind the wheel, right? So I say, you're not going to be able to get all of this information just because I introduced it to you. Let's start with some of the basics that we have right here. And so there's an online platform that I use. I encourage a lot, a lot of uh, um, any instructors called No Red Ink, all right? I'm teaching in a underserved population in, in high school. The No Red Ink platform, it has so, it, it allows students, one, to be able to, 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 to uh, practice, if they make a mistake, they get to see what their mistake is. If you think about it, in, in the past, when you when you made a mistake on your homework, you didn't you you couldn't really have no one to kind of help you out with it until the next class day. But think about all the things that would have happened between now and that next class day. Now, as an adult, you don't have problems at home or your challenges, your financial issues. Now, your whole your whole mindset about learning is not the same. So, using platforms. They, they, most of them are already on social media. So using platforms that are online that they can be able to use that can help them, one, find out what their mistakes are, practice it, and then be asked the same question again, and they can be successful. So 
I, I spend a lot of energy on trying to build their academic confidence. It's a lot easier for the content to be received when you have confidence that you can be able to receive it. And I make sure that every student knows that you are smart. I tell them that you're smart. Do not think that you're not. And as long as they hear it, remember that old cliche said, you know, it's like it's like anything else. If you work in an environment, again, I, I spend a lot of time working in troubled youth environments. And they always say a child will never get out of negativity if all they hear is negativity. Mm -hmm. So it's in reverse. So every day you smart, even through the challenges, you smart, letting them know you can still get out of that. That is just a part of the learning culture. So just continuing to be able to build a confidence and giving them platforms and opportunities where they can make the mistakes. They don't feel like it's detrimental to their learning. It's just a part of the process. Remember, it's not about how you start. I love that. I love that. And I love that idea. Of, I teach this to my students in my education coursework often. I try to. There's a big difference between covering material and mastering material. And so we, we can cover the whole textbook and you ain't mastering nothing. You're not learning. And so I think that that's so, such a poignant point, such a poignant point to make. I'm going to round this out and say, Jen, Jen, how do we transform things uh, for our students, especially right now? How do we ensure that Montgomery College and the work that you're doing is transformed forever, especially uh, as we are going back? We're starting to, we're going, I'm so excited, y'all, we're going back. We're going to be in person again. <laughs> but uh, how, did, how would you answer that question, Jen? Um, after what um, everybody has said, I don't know what else I can say. <laughs> They've mentioned everything that I was thinking about saying, but um, you know. said before, whether it's um, online or offline, I think the connection is the key, how to connect with the students, whether, you know, you're doing it face to face or, you know, online chat or whatever it may be, but just getting to know the students and what their needs are and providing the um, services they need. You know, I think as is educators, as you know, what people have been saying is that it's not only the academics, the contents of the course that we teach, but actually all that support that goes along with it. So um, that's about the only thing that I can think of um, saying if, after everybody has said. Sometimes, sometimes when the choir sings, all you can do is say amen, right? <laughs> awesome, awesome, Jen. So I've been, let me tell you something. I've been taking my own notes, text messaging, uh, wonder me, no red ink. So I've already kind of come away, walked away. I am going to be walking away with some really, really great resources. I'm going to open up the um, conversation to those of them who have either put questions in the chat box or you could put questions in the chat box now. Feel free to raise your hands. I have my whole screen in front of me and I got some beautiful faces all up in front of me. And so I can see my screen. If you have a question, please feel free to raise your hands or put a heart or do something so I know it's you. Um, and I hope that I did not miss anything from the chat. I was so engaged with this conversation to where I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> I was so engaged. I wasn't even paying attention to the chat box. You're good in the chat so far, Brandon. Okay, good, 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 good. And again, I'm gonna open up the uh, floor for any questions. I know we have just one more activity that we wanted to do before we left you all. And uh, I'm not sure if that's queued up yet, Gloria or Philip, uh, the Jamboard. Should we do that now as folks are pondering any questions that they may have? I think I see one person, uh, uh, Angela has it, her hands up. Thank you so much, Angela. Oh, this is my little here. Hi. Go ahead, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> So just really quickly, I had a question for Layla about Wonder Me. It sounds similar to spatial chat. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but do you, is it, is it free? Does it, any, can anyone access it? Does it work well with Zoom or is it a separate platform? Free? I don't know. What, what did you say? Spatial? Spatial chat. We've, we've had a, I can't, I can't remember who, Kirsten Newtalk did a workshop on that back in the spring, I believe. Yeah, so I don't know spatial chat. Wonder Me is okay. free. It's okay. I think up to 1500 people. So it's made to have a bunch of okay. um, people on okay. the platform. So I would say up to a thousand. You can create as many groups as you want or as many rooms as you want. It's pretty easy kind of like buying, if that makes sense. There are a few snags though, because I have gone through with um, a couple of my poli sci folk to like kind of walk through it for some of their exercises. One of them is that it works very differently on the phone and on the desktop which is also a benefit because you can use it on your desktop or on your phone. So students that just have like mobile devices 
um, when you sign in, it kind of makes you take a picture, which some people don't like, right? Like to sign, like to make your own little account, you have to take a little thumbnail picture. And so, you know, some, you know, just to, to keep that in mind. Um, but otherwise, I think it's, it's really great. It used to be called something else, not spatial chat, but they changed the name. Um, I was telling Michelle and I, it's, it's a little glitchy. Like you might want to do a test run with a couple of friends, figure out what's going on. Because again, like any other technology, you want to make sure that you can troubleshoot before you're in the room with 30 students and you're like, oh no, I don't know. Um, but I think it's really great. And it seems like the creators, I don't know them personally, have really just tried to um, make a platform that tries to simulate being in person. So I definitely encourage you to try it out. Thank you. I'm definitely going to try it out. And one thing that you said, Layla, that I want to underscore, it's a little glitchy. Um, if we don't start embracing the little glitches of life, the little glitches of Zoom, the little glitches of technology, everything cannot be perfect. I promise y'all, if, if 2020 did not teach us anything, is that <laughs> there is nothing but imperfections in life. And so embrace the glitches, embrace the snafus. You, you know, you do as much as you can. You learn as you go when you practice. But there's going to be a mic that does it. I got literally three microphones now because I think I broke two of them. <laughs> and so now I have the USB that's just kind of like entered into. It just happens. And so I think that we just have to embrace those uh, hiccups of life. And so I appreciate you saying that. It is a little and, and being forthcoming with it. Right. Like it's a little glitchy, but you know, kind of work it out. You do your practice thing. and You just try. So I'm here for that. Any other questions? And thank you, William, because I absolutely miss my sister Angela's hand. Uh, does anybody have any questions and I'm missing anything from the chat box? I want to make sure that anybody who has any, before we do the jam board, um, no, any other questions going once and like an auctioneer now twice <laughs> done. So we're done. Brandon, while we're queuing the, uh, the, um, jam board, one of the things that really resonated with me, uh, through all of the answers and, and your answers too, um, was just this whole notion of student first, right? At the end of the day, the student is number one in our world. And, you know, when I was a, um, a new teacher in Baltimore City, Brandon and I uh, shared the Baltimore City connection. Um, my mentor teacher gave me a poem that I've shared with my team, and I'm, I'm gonna share it with the, uh, the group here that is titled, The Student Is. And the student is the most important person on this campus. Without students, there would be no need for this institution. Not a cold enrollment statistic, but a flesh and blood human being with feelings and emotions like our own. Not somebody, sorry, uh, not somebody to be tolerated so that we can do our thing, they are our thing. Not dependent on us, rather we are dependent on them. Not an interruption of our work, but the purpose of it. We're not doing them a favor by serving them, they are doing us a favor by giving us the opportunity to do so. And I think as we come out of the pandemic, just remembering that the student is, is really our world and the restoring, the evolving and the transformation that we do is for our students in order to ultimately continue to stay relevant within their world in which they need us. So uh, hopefully Gloria has the jam board um, ready to go and uh, we'll throw it over to Gloria. Okay, so I'm going to switch computers. You guys talk for like 10 more seconds. Let me go pull it up real quick. Oh, I can here. talk for 10 more minutes if you like <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll be here all day. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And I saw another Baltimore connection. Philip, I'm not going to not give you shout out for my Hopkins. You know, that's, that's me, Paul School, Paul School, my school, Phillips. So I'm here for the Hopkins on the chest. I'm always going to be here for the Blue Jays. So thank you for that. Oh, goodness. Okay, it's coming. I got the link and it's going to be placed in our discussion here. It's Thank you here. so much, Laura. She's been an amazing tech support throughout this entire uh, phenomenal experience. <laughs> so shout out, shout out, shout out. And I didn't here know what Jamboard was until she shared it with me. So go ahead and Gloria and explain what we're doing now. Okay, so what I would like you guys to do is click on the link that it has been place in the chat and what it's going to do is it's going to take you to the Jamboard um, place where we're going to add our comments. Each and every one of you just answer that question. You will see the tools on the left side of the screen. Use those tools to add your response. 
And then after you're done, I will share the board with everyone. And this is something that we can go back to and visit um, later, if you like to, just to see how, how everyone responded. And it'll be fun to see what happens like in a year from now to look at our responses, uh, just to compare it at, to, uh, just to how much we've changed. I love it. Thank you so much. And because Dr. Miller gave me MC um, privileges, we're going to do this over some music. See that? Ooh. <laughs> DJ MC, let me tell you, I can do all things. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> let's try this out. Okay, so let's do like in the next, what, five minutes. Do we have any questions from the audience or are we done with all that? I think we're okay with the questions. All right. And if you, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. And if you've never used Jamboard before on the left hand side, the navigation on the left, um, below the uh, um, arrow, there is a sticky note. If you click on the sticky note, um, that's how these uh, yellow things appear on the screen. So a pop-up will appear. You can type in it and then uh, you can press save and it will automatically go on the screen. Awesome, thanks so much, Dr. Miller. And let's take about maybe three more minutes and then we'll toss it back to Gloria as we all take our sticky notes and post them. So now you should be able to see everything that we are adding as a group. Okay, it looks like William, while we're doing this, William has a question or suggestion. Go for it, William. Yes, so this is more of a question. So I've only, you know, been at Montgomery County, uh, Montgomery College for, you know, maybe it's a little over a year, a year and a half or so. And I was wondering, I don't know if it's a question suggestion. So outside of, of, of um, you know, teaching, you know, I do professional leadership and development. I work with organizations and one of the, the, the things I talk about is how you brand your organization. How do you show that you value your organization? And it starts with something simple as, I don't know if does the college have like Falcony shirts or apparel that as Falcony members we can have or we can purchase, or is that something that we that the, the organization has that I, I think it's important that students see the the student see the Falcony members branding and and loving what they're doing and, I, and, it, and it translates. So I don't know, this is more of a question and or a suggestion if it, if it does have happen where, and if it doesn't, is that something that, you know, we think that we could, could bring to the college about, you know, Brandy. I think that's a great idea and a great suggestion. I'll um, chime in real quick. I'll probably let Dr. Miller uh, share some thoughts, but I know the School of Education before the pandemic, we had swag on top of swag, on top of swag, <laughs> on top of swag. And so uh, there was a, like a mud room where cups and shirts and you name it. And so that has changed, at least for the School of Education. But we always had T-shirts and sweatshirts and lanyards and all that other good stuff. And so I'm hoping that, especially as we start to slowly transition back on campus, those mud rooms start opening up and we still have that School of Education fun swag. I'm not sure how Elite does it, Dr. Miller. 
Yeah, we 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 are very similar, Brandon. I think um, every uh, institute or every department has their own kind of swag that they offer. Um, good segue into the Elite Digest. Um, we actually <laughs> offer free um, uh, free uh, uh, MC swag, if you will, um, by completing the uh, game that's attached to the monthly digest. Um, it's a competition that we uh, we run. So. Uh, William, uh, in, in thanks for doing this. I, I'm sure we can uh, we can get you something. So uh, l- yeah. look out for an email uh, after yeah. this, and, and we'll get you something to uh, take care of your MC needs. Well, you know, it's a sports <laughs> background, right? I talk about team and sports, right? We know that, that yeah. that's that's one arena, man. That you know crosses uh, diversity and culture, but it's also too showing you know show, showing a uniformity and yeah. just just your outer appearance matters and so not to mention kind of the marketing and yeah. the equity that involves when people see more people that have something on um but just i think now i think this is a great great uh program here so why not continue to be able to build this culture of of, of growth organizations that succeed is when there are people man who all um kind of believe the same and look the same i love hey, it absolutely I, I have about a dozen mc shirts and I've only purchased two of them since I've been here. The rest I mean, of them were I mean, more like kind of, you know, specific. Yeah, I have like MC Wellness, MC Honors Program, MC Scholars. Like every, it seemed like all these events, I was always getting like, hey, have a t-shirt, take a t-shirt, get you in a t-shirt. So they're well, like I was being more Falcony specific, you know, yeah. just Stadium. kind of a, Arena. So I yeah. think that um, uh, the marketing department has all that. And if you can get in contact with someone there, they might be able to just send one to you. But but William, I, you I agree, William. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Brandon, go ahead. No, no, I was like, but you got a promise from Dr. Miller. So you got something coming <laughs> on the way anyway. But, but I, I do uh, really, uh, I, I appreciate the whole faculty branding thing too. I think yeah. that, um, you know, that would uh, send a unified message that we are MC proud, we are MC resilient, and we are Absolutely. MC strong. Um, channeling some uh, Dr. Pollard uh, uh, isms there uh, with our hashtags, going back to Brandon's earlier point about the hashtags. Uh, Ravi, I think uh, you have your hand up. If you have a question? Yeah, I have my hand up. First of all, I want to thank you guys. It was amazing, you know. I was so inspired by your stories, and we are very lucky to have William done as one of our GED instructors. So thank you, you know, just kudos to everyone. And uh, uh, I wish, you know, more and more people could have attended this discussion. We learned a lot and everybody was so like enthusiastic. Looks like you really, really love what you do. And that's what we want here. Uh, Just to answer William's question, William, um, you joined us during the pandemic and we have our AELD actually, I'll show you bottles. (laughs) (laughs) We don't have t-shirts, but we have a lot of stuff that we give out on our, um, you know, faculty in service that we used to have like on Zoom online. So as we come back, we have a lot of stuff for you guys. (laughs) The office, I'm at Westfield South today. So I'll have some stuff for you if you really (laughs) want to. But uh, yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, um, the MC store, I know they have the t-shirts and everybody has their own, um, you know, logo yeah. and stuff. But it's a great idea to show unity and to just go out and talk such great things about the program and the college. So thank you guys. I, I, I had one other question. One mm-hmm. other question. And again, I'm just only asking, you know, so does the, I served as the uh, vice chairman for an advisory board for Longwood University, which is my undergrad alma mater. And so part of, you know, our task in the cause of education and human services was continuing to be able to create spaces where faculty, faculty could be able to have spaces, basically. So mm-hmm. is there a faculty, I, I like this right here, just being able to share ideas, talk, is there a, a process? And I think especially now that we're in this Zoom space, is, is it happening or can it happen in terms of having staff where there's an opportunity for staff to engage, whether that be a monthly um, kind of staff opportunity where you're free to be able to come in and just Zoom and just kind of talk about ideas, you know, create a, and I'm, I'm more than willing to kind of set the tone. Um, you know, I, I, I was engaged in creating a, a space like that along with, but if that is something I would like to know about it, and if not, I'm more than willing to kind of start that where there's an opportunity for faculty to be able to engage monthly or quarterly, 
just to be able to share ideas and be and and, 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 and just roll things off each other's ideas. We're all in the same space right here. And, and, and it's just like kind of a parenting, right? Just being able to have that opportunity to be able to grow and learn and bounce things off would be great. So yeah. I'm asking and of course, suggesting if it's not a... Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I agree. So Shalon Childs has her hand up. She'll like to ask a question. Yeah, so this was just in response to the, the gear. Um, I know the counseling department, uh, I think it, it was probably right before COVID. And then this year we also, we got uh, uh, t-shirts, long sleeve. So the first year was like a cotton t-shirt, three quarter length sleeves. And then this year was a different material, but still got the shirts. Um, so counseling faculty or the counseling department, we ordered those. I don't know how they ordered them, but I can definitely look into that for you. Um, and then as DSS, we actually have DSS on our shirts. So we have the general counseling, they have just counseling on theirs. And then DSS, we have ours on, our, uh, you know, those on our shirts. So I can definitely ask around to find out how they went about getting those if you'd like to that information. And then on your second set uh, question and suggestion, I think that's amazing um, because it's always nice to come together and say, all right, these are the things that we're dealing with, or I'm stuck with this, or I have tried this and it worked out great. And then you know, be able to share those ideas because we don't come together enough um, because everything is so busy. Um, we just all have so much going on. And so trying to add another thing on, nobody wants to start that up. So I think that's an amazing idea. Um, and so if I got an invite, I would be there. Just putting that out there. Very nice. Well, we, we, we hear you and, then, and we will make it happen. Um, we'll take Barbara's question and then we'll wrap up real quick. So Barbara, go ahead. I was just going to say the same thing. I would join such a group. I think would be extremely helpful. And this has been a wonderful session. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. Well, it's excellent. Been wonderful. And, and and we we definitely hear you. We will create the space. We will uh, we will call upon you. Um, we believe in reflection and collaboration um, just as much as you do. Um, and you know, truly, Jen, William, Shalala, um, Layla, Shalon, sorry, and Layla. Um, and of course, Brandon, thank you all for giving us your time today um, and sharing these stories. Because again, as your colleagues have said, you know, this is what helped us reflect and grow too. And look at this, look for this space. We will create this space um, and we will move forward together as one MC. So thank you, everybody. Um, if you are signed up for this afternoon's faculty showcase session, um, please, uh, it's from two to three o'clock. Um, I believe it's uh, Gladys um, uh, Effendi. Is that, is that right, Phil? This afternoon? Gladys Effendi, yes. Yep, excellent, great. So uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, soon this afternoon if, if you're joining us. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for participating today. And, and please and take truly, a moment uh, to fill out the survey. <laughs> oh, yes. And uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, filling out the session survey, that would be wonderful. Please put on the survey that you would like more of these opportunities. That way I can convince my team to, to do this. <laughs> right. And also include in the survey that you're interested in a uh, space where you can share ideas. I think all that carries weight. Yeah, absolutely. Again, thank you, everybody, for a, for a wonderful session. And uh, enjoy the next few weeks and enjoy the uh, upcoming winter break. Everybody deserves the break. So. Uh, yeah, we're, the light for the winter break is at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Happy Tuesday, Thank everybody. You. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.